What's up guys, Tommy Bennett here, and in today's video, it's more of a conceptual video on how to be more awesome at snowboarding and how to progress your riding. Now we're gonna do a little bit of stuff in the park. We're gonna do some stuff out of the park. It's not gonna be necessarily, this is the steps for a specific trick. I'm gonna give you guys some guidelines and some tactics that I use to break down my own riding, how to progress my own riding, and then obviously you guys can do the same thing. So if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the content, definitely give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and what do you guys think of the new kit? Let's go! If you guys are looking for any new fresh gear i got 10 percent discount code for you guys all you gotta do is click the link below it'll automatically give you 10 percent off show some vibes show some show some love 686 hooking it up super pumped super stoked on the kit let me know what you guys think about down below and uh, let's get to progressing our riding Now, within this channel, if you guys have been bef here before, if you've not been here before, one of the biggest things that I talk about is body positions. Body positions and the movements that you can move from that body position, the movement options that you have out of that body position is such a game changer. Now, let's say that we're going into a jump and we're side slipping down, probably not the right tactic, but it stems from probably not the right body position. So the biggest thing that you guys gotta be, a, be able to do is identify what is the most awesome position for the thing that I'm trying to do. One little life hack that you can do is follow me on Instagram, watch my videos. Uh, I have like literally over 500 breakdowns of different tricks, turns, tactics, skills, all these cool things. But what you can do is you can go screen record them or save them and then you can scrub through and look at exactly what the body parts are doing. Now, I suggest that you work from the top down or the bottom up. And what I mean by that is what is my shoulder doing on this board slide? Okay, through the beginning, the middle, and the end of the feature, what is happening? Now, what about my hips? What about my legs? What about my eyes? And start to identify exactly what those body parts are doing for the, the, the entirety of that trick. That's like a big deal. So once you're able to understand what your body parts are doing, then it's gonna be a lot easier to understand how to do that specific thing. So that's one thing I do a lot is I literally just watch other people snowboard. I, I, I try to figure out what is the key takeaway that they're doing and their body position is doing to get that trick. Now obviously this could apply to doing a, a toe side turn. Is your lead shoulder in the right direction? Is your hips, your eyes? What if I want to do the sickest Ryan Napton cars? Big shout out to that dude. What if I want to do those cars? How do I do it? I want to scrub it down, identify it by understanding the body positions and what those body positions are doing. That's number one. I'm gonna interrupt right there, my dudes. So if you wanna splurge a little bit and get some stickers, go ahead and check out the link down below. I got a bunch of stickers. I'm always adding new, cool, different styles of stickers in there as well. So you definitely wanna check back, but that does really help support the channel. I'm able to like pay for lift tickets, gas, buy new GoPro batteries, get new mics, lighting, streaming setups, all that stuff. Also, if you feel like you're struggling 100% and you just need help, uh, come join me on a live stream where you can ask a whole bunch of questions. I can geek out, get super nerdy help you guys out it's a really dope time and i get to know you you get to know me all right let's get back to the show number two is going to be piggybacking on what we just did how can we mimic those body positions or that trick or that skill that we just wanted to identify how do i actually put that to action now the one thing that i love to do for instance i'm gonna do a little board side 270 out but instead of just hucking and chucking on a rail i'm gonna use this sick open slope here and i'm gonna be able to take my time i'm actually gonna get into a board side position i'm gonna feel where is my core where is my body do i feel like i'm out of balance do i feel like i'm in balance okay now how do i generate the momentum for the 270 out exactly what body part needs to do what and can i kinesthetically feel that aha moment of oh 
that's how I do it. So I practice that out here because it's low consequence as well as I get high uh, amounts of repetition. I mean, I could do 100 board side same ways out here on this run by the time I get to the bottom because you know this this runs pretty long but in the park to do that same thing it might be one feature that's right for it every 15 minute lap how am I how am I gonna get better if I don't have as much repetition so get repetition practice your body positions in a low consequence situation now we're gonna piggyback on the piggyback we just did some rail slides but hey man I want to learn some front side 540s because I'm struggling well, what if I did the same thing here? Okay, where do I need to throw my shoulder? Where do I need to look? How do I spot the landing? How do I do these tricks without adding a, a significant amount of consequences? Obviously, as you're doing this, please be aware of your downhill edge. Don't catch an edge. It sucks. It's not fun. I'm going to go through how I would take a frontside 360 to a 5 just by doing it on the ground. I literally did this one with one of my athletes the other day. She learned front 5 and cab 5s in the same day and never done them, never attempted them. We did about 15 to 20 of them outside of the park, just like we're about to do. Learned them nearly instantly within two to three tries on a legit jump. It, it was pretty incredible. So we're gonna have to figure that one out right now. So what I was able to do there was, okay, how do I actually wind up my shoulders to generate the momentum? Okay, now I need to extend. Where do I look? What am I feeling in my core? What am I feeling in my lead shoulder? Okay, I get the 360 around. The biggest thing with the front side or cab 540 is finishing the trick. So I wanna be able to identify that back shoulder finishing the trick. But notice I didn't just finish the trick lackadaisy. I wanna mimic what it's like to actually finish the trick in terms of landing position. So you'll see that I over-exaggerated the squatting position so that I can really truly understand what are the components? What am I struggling with? What doesn't feel right? If it doesn't feel right, it's probably a body position thing or a lack of experience thing. But a lot of times it's a body position thing. If it doesn't feel right, it's a body thing, most likely. And I always, I truly believe if you're doing it right and you're in the right body position, the trick should feel easy. You'll hear that dude's doing all these crazy spins and stuff and they're like, oh, that was easy because you did it right. If you feel like it's way harder than it should be, it's either you're not prepared for it we're not doing the right, you're not in the right body positions. And then after that, what I did is I started now catching some air. I threw it so I could actually feel the intensity of the throw. So I threw the 360 and then I focused on the finish. The big components of a 540 is throwing, keeping the rotation going, spotting the landing and finishing. But I did all of that out here in the middle of the, the slope without anybody around, without people like intimidating me, without the big air and the consequences. Of course, be aware of your edges. This is like a sick environment, just to focus on yourself and not worried about being intimidated and then I could take that stuff to the park. The next big bullet point that we have is gonna be repetition, repetition, repetition. The more you can practice, the more your body becomes confident, the more your body becomes comfortable with what you're about to do. You also start to uh, understand the little of the tricks of the trade because you may have attempted a 360 40 times. Oh, I accidentally threw it too hard. What happens? Oh, I under rotated too much. I lean too far forward. I lean too far backwards. You start giving yourself all this information of what is right and what is less awesome. And then your body starts to trust that and then become familiar with that. And eventually you're going to get to a point where you can throw the trick and then you have that aha moment of, oh, that makes sense. But this still applies if you're doing a carve. If I want to, I'm gonna do a carve for you guys right here in a second. If I'm doing a carve and I barely get into it, and I barely get into it more, 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 and all of a sudden I know what is too much. I know what is not enough. I know how to get down. I know what feels right, what doesn't feel right. And that's a big deal to progressing your riding because ultimately you got to own it when you're trying to take that next step of, of sending it. You got to have everything, all the building blocks there. Now I got a trivia question for you. How big is a pyramid. Ooh. Now, as you saw there, that wasn't a park trick, but we're able to break it down little 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 more 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 and then it was too much but now i got a nice little spicy one for you sean and i are gonna do a tow car 360 nose butter back to a carby
So I know a lot of you guys love to hit jumps. I'm gonna make a specific video on how to be awesome at jumps, like big, big jumps and that stuff. But I wanna kinda give you guys a little trick of the trade on what I do. So what I like to do is I like to get as much hang time as possible. Overall, just get used to being in the air. Is my shoulder squared up? Am I in a right, awesome body position? And then what I'll do is I'll hit the small jump, hit it a couple times, feel good, feel good, and I'll go to the next size jump. But before going to the next size jump, I'll start setting that little jump just a little extra big. What does it feel like to go big in the air? What does it feel like to be higher in the air? What does it feel like to be able to handle and absorb the impact? Well, I just do that on a small jump. And then, and then by the time I get to the next jump, I'm already comfortable with that hang time. And then if I'm at a 20 foot jump, I'll try to send that 20 foot jump big. And then, so I'm ready for the next size jump. Obviously don't go so big that you blow up your knees and you die, but that's the goal is to like kind of send it a little extra so that you can bridge the gap to the next jump. So if I'm already going 30 feet on this jump, 25 foot jumps wouldn't be so bad, right? So in theory, if I can go that big on the first jump, the second jump shouldn't be so bad. And I go a little big on the second jump, so I can take it to the third jump, take it to the fourth jump, and then eventually I could take it to big line over here. So obviously I would probably hit that first jump maybe 20, 30 times if I need to and I really need to feel comfortable for before moving on. But sometimes it might only take you three tries. It kind of depends up to you and your, and your, like, your skill set. But I'll hit that jump, get comfortable with it, move on, get comfortable, with it, move on. That's kind of like what I'm gonna do. So now I feel comfortable on one, two, three, four, then I can go to large line. All right, so I'm gonna go try to use exactly what I just said. I'm gonna go to jump one, see if I can send that and go to jump two. All right. So the last bullet point we have here is at some point you're gonna have to go for the trick, but you wanna make sure that you're prepared for that trick, that you have the right body positions, that you have had that aha, oh, I know what it feels like type of moment. And that's how I base a lot of my snowboarding around is I'll go into a park or I'll, I'll feel out my day in the first couple tricks, first couple runs, and really identify where does my body feel like going? Does front side feel better? Does back side feel better? Maybe switch does. And I'll run down that path of least resistance. Now, a lot of my athletes, I, don't, I, I sometimes allow them to do that. And other times we just work on your weaknesses and you build the progression, you build the steps to get yourself there so that you feel good. So it's all about making those logical steps. Do I need to take this front three and break it into 10 steps? five steps or just one. Now that's gonna be very specific to you. If you're looking for like specific breakdowns on like individual tricks, go to my YouTube channel. On the right hand side, there's a search bar and just type in a keyword. That keyword, keyword could be jump, 360, backside, rails, anything like that. And you're gonna be able to find some specific breakdowns. Like I said, this is more conceptual. This is how I process, this is how I do my, my progress in my own riding. Find the least amount of resistance, go down that day. Sometimes I'll, I'll work on my weaknesses. And, and uh, at the end of the day, the more practice, the more repetition you get, the more awesome you're gonna be at snowboarding. So on that note, guys, nothing but love. We out. Thanks, Sean. Woo!